Hello, I'm Rosie Vision and I like looking at entertainment through rose-tinted glasses because we all deserve some magic in our lives. And what can be more magical than revisiting my favorite group of fairies? A while back, I made a video going over the darkest moments in Winx Club. It was fun going over the series with more of a serious lens because there were actually quite a lot of mature moments to go over. So many, in fact that it wasn't enough for one video. Today I'm going to do my best to go over everything I may have missed the first time around. A lot of you guys really wanted a part 2 of this and even suggested which moments to cover. So thanks to all of you for making this video possible. Before I start going down the list one by one, I'll explain a little bit for anyone who hasn't seen the first video. This is a list of moments I compiled from the Winx Club series that I found surprisingly dark considering the source material. I included moments from the main TV series, movies, as well as World of Winx. From what I've heard, there's definitely some moments that would qualify from the comics, but I'll probably cover the comics separately another time anyways. I did order these from least dark to most as best as I could but it's all just my own opinion at the end of the day. So don't take the rankings too seriously. If there's something you think is missing from the list, chances are I covered it in the video I made last time. So if you're interested, you can watch that video too if you haven't already. Alrighty, I don't want this introduction to drag on for too long, so let's start going through this list, shall we? 10. Musa losing her voice. This is the only moment from the Nick years this time around. Regardless of how you feel about seasons 5 through 7, I think we can all agree that for whatever reason, Winx Club's target age demographic seemed to take a bit of a nosedive during this time. Especially when season 7 was airing. This isn't inherently a bad thing, however, in Winx Club's case, it kind of created big tonal whiplash when you compare the first few seasons to what Nick made. Though to be fair, season 5 and 6 did have some moments that felt very akin to the original version of the show. Hence why I included something from season 6 on this list. Season 6 overall was a pretty big disappointment for me personally, because it felt like such wasted potential. The idea of the Winx Club battling against fairy tale creatures and traveling through storybooks sounds amazing on paper. But sadly, the execution was rather lackluster. The same could be said even for the moment I'm covering right now. But the concept itself is quite sad and depressing, so I figured it deserved a spot on this list anyways. Musa's voice is stolen by Rumpelstiltskin in what clearly is an homage to The Little Mermaid. As the fairy of music, Musa's voice is obviously something very important to her. Not only that, but her powers are affected too. Bloom doesn't let Musa go to the legendarium world without it because she can't transform. Even though she's still in her Bloomix at this point. Really feel like they should have had her detransform. That would have made things feel more dramatic. But besides that, this is really a heartbreaking moment for Musa. It was really eerie seeing her cry her eyes out with no sound coming out of her mouth at all. Because magic took her voice away, she's now completely silent, which feels extremely out of place for a fairy of music. Playing instruments becomes her only solace during this time, so she gravitates towards the piano in order to come to terms with everything and just feel at peace. Similarly to season 6 as a whole, I truthfully feel as though this was a wasted opportunity. The concept itself is great and could serve as a gateway for Misa to become an even stronger character than she already was. But the execution was still lacking. The music was really loud and distracting when Misa realizes that she lost her voice. It would have been so much better if they had either used simpler instrumentation to let you focus in on what had just happened, or even better, get rid of the music altogether to cement the fact that Musa is now living in silence and that this is a very serious situation. Less is more. That would have worked so much better. But instead we get a scene where the musical scoring is taking away from the scene at hand. And the writing doesn't give the levity that it deserves either. Seeing Musa bawl her eyes out with no sound was great, but there was no breathing room whatsoever. 
The Winks seem way too calm with what just happened, and immediately are able to reassure Musa that everything will be okay. Although you could argue something like that would be possible since they're such good friends, I wish they went another way. I would have preferred to see Amusa break down more initially and maybe even push the Winx away at first. Yes, she loves the Winx, but a part of her identity was just snatched away. Earlier in the series, Amusa had a nightmare about a world without music, and she was terrified. But the impact just isn't in Season 6 at all. They only show her sad for a few moments, and there's never a time where the audience feels as though maybe she won't get her voice back. This could have been an amazing arc if handled better, but it seems like the writers just did all this without much thought on what it meant for Amusa as a character at all. I did rant for quite a bit on this one in terms of delivery, however once again the concept itself was quite dark since Musa lost something so incredibly important to her that she can't imagine life without. So despite the bad writing, I do think this is worthy of being on the list. But I had to put it on the lower end, considering it was just temporary and not handled well, unfortunately. 9. The Winx's Nemeses In Season 2 of World of Winx, Tinkerbell creates dark versions of the Winx called Nemeses. It was a cool reference to how Peter Pan has a mischievous shadow who is independent from him completely. Each nemesis confronts their respective winks and serves as an obstacle for them to overcome. It took too much time to go through all of them, so I'm just going to focus on the two I think had the biggest impact in terms of making the season kind of dark. Vertigo is Bloom's nemesis and is the shadow creature who uses mind games the most. She haunts the normally brave and courageous Bloom in her dreams, and slowly breaks down her psyche. If that weren't bad enough, she also constantly shows herself to Bloom in the real world, and gaslights her into thinking she's seeing things and going crazy. Though undoubtedly brave, Bloom is probably the easiest of the Winx to stir emotionally, so she's an easy target through this kind of strategy. I felt horribly for Bloom seeing her go through all of this, and Vertigo did a great job breaking down her defenses and making her feel truly alone. The second nemesis that stood out to me personally was Obscura, who targets Stella. Obscura forces Stella to relive childhood memories where she was bullied as a child. She also taunts her by trying to use Stella's every insecurity against her. The scene really stood out to me because it explains Stella's character so well. The normally bright, confident, and happy-go-lucky girl we've come to know and love has been something of a front. Stella was an outcast when she was younger, so she tried her hardest to compensate by focusing on her appearance and doing her best to outshine everyone around her. Being reminded of who she used to be was devastating for her, and my heart breaks watching Stella in a scene. Obviously, the Stella we know and love isn't a phony or anything. She genuinely shines bright on her own and has plenty of accepting and loving friends. But this backstory was still completely unexpected for me, especially considering the implications it has on her psyche as a child. 8. The Water Star Trials Season 3 was an intense season overall. There are tons of dark moments to choose from, but one part of the story I neglected to touch on last time was when the Winx needed to prove themselves worthy of the Water Stars. The Water Stars are their only weapon to fight against Valtor, who is waging war across the entire magic dimension. So there is a lot at stake here. The sacrifices the Winx had to make in order to prove themselves worthy were insane. I did go over Musa's sacrifice last time, since I covered her family's backstory as a whole. To recap, she had to give up the chance to be with her deceased mother in order to pass her trial, which not only was heartbreaking, but truly the worst of the sacrifices by a long shot. But that doesn't mean that the other sacrifices aren't worth mentioning. Stella had to give up her looks for the Water Stars, which on paper doesn't seem all that bad. Yeah, Stella is really vain and cares about stuff like that, but do looks really matter that much at the end of the day? But the face that they end up giving Stella is incredibly inhuman and makes her look straight out of a horror film. I never would have guessed the design that they gave her in a million years. It's easy to laugh at because of how ridiculous it looks, 
but it goes to show just how responsible and respectable Stella really is. She was willing to live the rest of her life looking like that if it meant that they had a shot at beating Valtor. As for Tecna, her sacrifice was something more internal than external. Tecna has always seemed aloof and unfeeling to those around her, because she normally roots herself in logic and has trouble with emotions. But all of that starts to change once she becomes friends with the Winx. She slowly starts opening herself up and learning to value the connections she has. Not only that, but she also finds a guy that she really likes for the first time too. So having to give up her emotions to essentially become a robot in human clothing was a huge deal. It's hard to convey what giving up emotion would actually be like because it's so rooted in what it means to be human. Giving up something so core to what it means to be alive to the point that it's hard to describe in words is terrifying. 7. Farragonda is Cursed Yet another moment from Season 3, everyone. This is quite a brief moment in the series, so brief that I usually forget about it unless I'm re-watching the season, but the impact this scene had on me as a kid cannot be understated. Farragonda is the head honcho of the Winx Club universe. As far as we're aware, she's probably supposed to be the most powerful magical being we're introduced to, and she's always there to support the Winx when they need it. She takes a very motherly role and is seen as untouchable within the Winx Club universe. But that image was shattered when she fought against Valtor in Season 3. The two had a very intense battle that ends super abruptly. No one knows how things ended and the Winx frantically search for Farragonda to make sure she's alright. But unfortunately, that is far from the case. When the Winx arrive at the scene, the surrounding landscape is in ruins, and all that's left of the powerful guardian fairy they know and love is a lone standing tree. You can still see Farragonda's face with her mouth agape wearing a horrified expression on her face, trapped eternally in the moment just before her demise. And the song that they play here is absolutely haunting and still gives me chills to this day. It's so melancholic and full of despair. This scene was devastating for me as a kid. I thought that Farragonda was nearly invincible and would always be around to protect the Winx. So seeing her in this petrified and horrifying state really drove home just how cruel Valtor was and how big a threat he is to the Winx. This is still one of my favorite moments from the series to this day because of just how impactful and dreary it is. 6. The Trick Steel Bloom's Powers Season 1 also had some very intense scenes. The tricks were no laughing matter back then. This was them at their absolute peak. They were unhinged and psychotic young students who would stop at nothing to get the power they thought they so rightfully deserved, which just so happens to be Bloom's Dragon Flame. The tricks fight dirty on many occasions to try to take possession of it, but this instance takes the cake by a long shot. Desperate to get the dragon flame by any means necessary, the tricks take things to the most extreme level they possibly can. They make things personal by holding Bloom's parents hostage. They tie up Mike and Vanessa and ask for Bloom's dragon flame. When she refuses, the tricks throw her parents down a bottomless portal. Endlessly falling forever and ever is a pretty morbid way to go. Luckily, Bloom is able to catch them in time and bring them back, but things are far from over. The worst part of this whole scenario is the fact that Bloom doesn't even know why she's being targeted by the tricks in the first place. She doesn't know her true origins but they do. So it's at this horrifying and traumatic moment that Bloom gets the answer she was looking for, and they're far from pleasant. She's the sole survivor of her planet, and the menacing witches before her are the descendants of those responsible for Domino's demise. This was quite a powerful scene. Bloom was given a serious ultimatum, learns the horrible truth behind her past, and has her powers forcibly ripped from her all in one go. 5. Riven Stabs Musa This scene was robbed of the gravitas that it deserved. It was part of an average kid's movie after all, so the impact isn't that great. But just the idea that one of the main characters gets stabbed at all is pretty dark if you ask me. The circumstances behind it are pretty messed up too. Greek tragedy level stuff, you know? 
The scene in question happens in the first Winx movie, Secret of the Lost Kingdom. Once again, Riven is being a tool, used by the villains to attack the Winx and specialists. He's not in his right mind and starts fighting with Sky. He tries to stab him, but Misa saves the day and gets in the way of the blade. I guess it's more of a slice than a stab? It's all pretty unclear, honestly, because of the way that it was animated. They try to make it look as non-threatening as possible. There's no blood, and the pacing goes by way too quick, in my opinion. If we could actually see what happened more clearly, and there was time to digest this information, it would have made a huge impact, in my opinion. I don't even think I realized what happened the first time around because of how unclear it was. But regardless of the poor execution, the concept itself is indeed quite dark. Riven tries to kill Skye, but ends up attacking the girl he loves instead, while not in his right mind. And what a courageous move on Musa's part as well. She let herself get struck down by Riven's sword in Skye's place to save him. Even though I don't think we've ever seen the two of them talk to each other before. What a heroic deed. And of course, this whole situation brings Riven back to his senses, and he realizes what a horrible thing he has just done. Once again, I feel like on paper this was a really good idea, but it is really, really lacking in action. But that doesn't take away from the fact that this is still a very dark concept, hence why it made this list in the first place. 4. Galatea Loses Her Wings I had this one as an honorable mention in my last video, but I needed to give it the attention it deserves. I didn't realize just how dark and messed up this concept was until I rewatched season 3 about a year ago. In the Winx Club universe, wings are obviously a part of a fairy's identity and body. We also learned that if wings are torn or broken, it takes them many years to grow back. All of this is to say that a fairy losing her wings is a very serious matter. And we, the audience, witness this happen firsthand. The tricks are at Althea looking for secret spells to give to Valtor. They cross paths with Princess Galatea, who bravely tries to fight them off, but to no avail. The tricks hold Galatea prisoner and force her to reveal the Hall of Enchantments. Galatea crosses the tricks and tries to run off. However, Icy catches her, freezes her wings, and with a snap of her fingers, shatters them entirely. There wasn't enough time in the scene to properly process what happened to Galatea, but when you think about it, it's pretty messed up. In mere seconds, Icy shatters a part of her body that is central to her identity and powers. On top of that, wings don't grow back just like that. It's a very long process. So Galatea has essentially been handicapped as a fairy by the tricks. That's pretty serious if you ask me. Also noteworthy is the fact that Galatea risked her life trying to save Althea's spells from the fire left behind by the tricks so that her sacrifice wouldn't be in vain. She's a true MVP of the Winx universe. She deserves more credit than she gets. The only reason she got her wings back so easily was because of Musa's fairy dust. Without it, who knows when her wings would have grown back, if ever. 3. Enchantic Sacrifices I did mention Tecna's quote-unquote death last time because of just how big a deal it was within the show. I also talked a bit about Aisha's blindness and how she gave up a chance to heal herself for Queen Ligeia. But I feel like there's still more to cover in terms of what the girls did to earn their enchantics. Out of the girls we have left, I feel like Flora and Stella had the darkest origins for their enchantics powers. Let's start off with Flora. Hers is probably the most straight to the point. The Winx are trying to reverse the spell on Farragonda. The only way to bring her back to normal is by reversing time using water from the Black Willow's Tears. If they don't hurry, then the spell will become permanent. As always, the tricks get in the Winx's way, and in the process, Miele, Flora's sister, falls into the pond surrounding the Black Willow after trying to protect Flora. Flora instantly dives into the water to save her youngest sister. She uses a bubble to bring her back safely, but ironically enough, Flora is dragged down by surrounding plant life. Flora would have drowned if it had not been for her earning enchantix. Miele and Flora both put their lives on the line to save one another, making for quite the touching moment. 
Stella's circumstances were a bit more complicated. I included her beauty arc in the last video I made. Long story short, Stella and her family get caught up in a fight for political power, and in the process, Stella is transformed into a monster. If that weren't enough, Stella's father is being influenced by evil magic that causes him to forget about Stella and hunt her down. Stella's life was turned completely upside down. Even after returning to her normal self, her problems are far from over. Her father is still wrapped around Cassandra's finger, the person who loves her more than anything else in the world. Stella's father is kind of all she has besides the Winx, especially considering her parents recently divorced. So Stella's main pillar of emotional support has been ripped from her. Cassandra, the one responsible for all of this, makes matters worse. Now that she has the power she wanted so desperately, she leaves King Radius to die. An upset dragon is attacking and she leaves him in the dust. Because of the spell she put on him, Cassandra is the only person he cares about at this time, so he desperately calls out for her in vain when she takes off. He's left completely alone with an unpredictable and angry dragon on his tail. Despite all the awful things Radius has done to Stella recently, she's still the only one to come rushing to his aid when he needs it. Stella fights off the dragon and presumably is drained of her energy and gets hit. Radius comes to his senses and is heartbroken to see his only daughter hurt. In Stella's case, I feel like the build-up to her gaining Enchantix was what made things feel quite dark and bleak. She went through a lot to get her life back together, and her gaining Enchantix was the pinnacle moment when we see just how badly Stella and her father were mistreated by Cassandra. 2. Professor Avalon Season 2 was pretty messed up when you think about it. It's the season I personally rewatched the least. I don't dislike it, I just gravitate to the other seasons more. But my god, this season is very disturbing behind the scenes. Darkar may not have posed that big a threat when fighting head on with the Winx, but the way he handled things behind the scenes was quite frightening. Probably the darkest thing to come from all of Darkar's plans was what he did with Avalon. Professor Avalon was supposed to teach at Althea, but Darkar intercepts him and keeps him prisoner whilst chained up in a dungeon and presumably torturing him. Darkar sends a fake in Avalon's place in order to get close to Bloom, holder of the dragon flame. The evil Avalon successfully manipulates Bloom into thinking he's trustworthy, so much so that she pretty much worships the ground that he walks on and all of their interactions are skin-crawlingly uncomfortable when you realize what is actually going on. Especially considering the fact that Bloom at this point is only 17 and is growing suspiciously close to this grown adult professor we know so little about, and she falls for the bait spectacularly. The fake Avalon captures Bloom to take her to Darkar. Darkar then corrupts Bloom entirely, creating Dark Bloom. Seeing Bloom taped down with a gag over her mouth in this situation was, and still is, unbelievably uncomfortable. To add to the alarm bells going off in everyone's heads, in the Cinelum version at least, Darkar refers to Dark Bloom as, and I quote, the natural consort of the Shadow Phoenix. So, yeah. I don't think I need to say much more on that. Bloom and Avalon slash Darkar's relationship is extremely icky and messed up in Season 2, and the fact that we as an audience are left in the dark with Bloom and slowly learn the truth of the situation after the real Avalon escapes just adds to the uneasy atmosphere this season cultivates so well. 1. Terrestrial Fairies vs. The Wizards There is no way I could put anything else as a number one in my mind. Season 4 really is a mixed bag. We get the specialists and Winx being kind of petty and childish to each other. There's also the whole cutesy love and pet thing going. But underneath it all is probably the most miserably dark story Winx Club has ever had. Obviously, the biggest takeaway we get from the season in terms of dark moments is Nabu's death and how it impacts the Winx. And I won't take away from that because I feel like it's the most emotionally charged and mature writing that we've ever gotten from Winx Club. But there's an even darker story we're introduced to in Season 4. It just happens off-screen. 
The Wizards of the Black Circle are villains at their finest in my book, in terms of just how terrifying their actions are. Not only are they the only villains to actually kill a character in Winx Club, but their reputation is quite horrifying. The Wizards of the Black Circle are fairy hunters. They steal fairy magic by hunting down fairies and ripping off their wings. They successfully hunted down all of the Earth fairies hundreds of years ago. After robbing them of their wings, they also imprisoned them in their own castle. To make things more grim, this is also when we learn that it takes hundreds of years for the Earth fairies to grow back their wings. So presumably, hundreds of Earth fairies were violently robbed of their wings, which are larger than most, by the way, and then imprisoned in their own home whilst being handicapped for hundreds of years. There is a reason why the Earth Fairies wanted revenge against the Wizards of the Black Circle. And honestly, can we really blame them? The Wizards committed a magical genocide, imprisoned an entire group of fairies, and ripped off a part of their identities from their bodies. I don't think there's anything Rainbow can do to top this level of gruesomeness in the Winx Club universe. It may not have happened on screen, but the audience is still very aware of what took place between the terrestrial fairies and the Wizards of the Black Circle. It was awful. There's probably a reason why we never got a proper flashback. It would have been terrifying to see what this event actually looked like firsthand. Hence why I could find no better substitute for the number one darkest Winx Club moment on this list. And I think I've had my fix of Dark Wings Club moments. What about you? Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please subscribe so you can join me on the journey to come. And if you'd like to support the channel, then check out my Patreon. Each patron gets a cute animated sticker I made and access to other cool rewards like early video access and access to videos of mine that aren't on YouTube anymore. Before I sign off, I'll take a quick moment to thank my patrons. A big thanks to Toddy of Fantasy. I know life isn't always full of sunshine and rainbows, but as always, I hope I'm able to send a little bit of positivity your way. And don't forget to keep a little magic in your life. See you guys in the next one. Thank you.